Welcome back to another discipleship training session. We are going to pick up where we left off from la last two weeks ago, actually. Yeah. Um, when we were talking about we, on the lesson how to study the Bible. So when we last ended, we were looking at how God is the one, again, who is speaking directly to us when we study the Bible. And we really need to look at it from that perspective that it is God speaking to us, um, not just people who wrote stuff out of their own biases or whatever like that. And we started going through, taking a look at how the word of God is the only source of truth. And we were looking at all of the scriptures that relate that the scriptures are truth. It is God's word. So today we're going to pick up from there and start to look at, before we go any further, um, how the word of God also equates to his law his commandments, his judgments, his counsel within his kingdom, um, and the entire spirit world. So we are going to start off going to Psalms chapter 19 and look at verse 9. And New King James is fine. So again, we're looking at Psalm chapter 19, verse 9. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. Okay, so here we're, we're hearing that the judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. Well, we took a look at two weeks ago how the word of God is what's true. That's the only truth. So for his judgments to be true, his judgments have to be the word of God because there's not multiple truths that exist. So we're now going to turn and look at Psalms chapter 119. And look at verse 142. Your righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and your law is truth. So here, we see that God's judgments is true. The law is truth. Again, there's one truth. So the law equates to the word of God. His word is law. His word is judgments. When he speaks, judgments are coming forth. When he speaks, the law is being given of what we need to keep. And if we break that, we're violating the law, which moves us over into sin. So all of this is important to understand as we begin to study the Bible, because we're going to get to in the next sec section what our mindset should be when we're studying. Um, so just know that in this same chapter of 119, we're going to go to verse 151 in Psalms. <clears throat> You are near, O Lord, and all your commandments are truth. Okay, so his commandments are truth. His commandments is the word of God. His law is the word of God. His judgments is equal to being the word of God. In the same chapter of 119 in Psalms, we're going to look at verse 160. The entirety of your word is truth. And every one of your righteous judgments endures forever. Okay, so his, the entirety, the whole sum, everything he said, that is truth. We're going to look at two more scriptures. We're going to go to the Gospel of John and look at chapter 17, verse 17. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. And this is Christ talking to the Father, saying that his word is truth. So again, there's not multiple truths. So since the word of God is true, the judgments, the law, the commandments, um, all of these different things are equated. His counsel is equated to the word. And we'll look at one more in Isaiah chapter 25, verse 1. <laughs> Isaiah. Isaiah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord, you are my guide. I will, I will exalt you. I will praise your name, for you have done wonderful things. Your counsels of old are faithfulness and truth. Okay, so his counsels are truth. So, again, when we read and study the word of God, we're getting counsel from God. We're getting to know what the laws are. We're getting to know what his word has to say. We're getting to know what his judgments are, what his final decision is on something. That's the judgment. Um... So, 
Any questions, thoughts, or comments on that? Okay. So the word of God is not polluted with men's own biases, opinions, nor interpretations. Therefore, the Bible is not the error-filled word of man, but the Bible is error-free word of God. And we can trust it. We can take it to the bank. We know that it's not going to change because we saw in some of these scriptures, it was talking about his word is everlasting, his counsel is everlasting, his judgment is not changing. So I can be sure that when I stand on this and adopt this as a principle in my life or a tenet in my life that I'm structuring all of my decisions around, it's going to be very consistent and it's not going to change. Even though the world around me changes and the laws in the earth change, his standard, his view, his judgment, his way is not going to change. And that's a decision that people have to make. Am I going to line up with God's word? even though it's inconveniencing me in my world or even though it's making me look um, like I'm not going along with the, you know, PC status, political correctness, um, you know, but if you want to live with him at the end of your life, you're going to have to endure all of that because um, we're constantly seeing things happen, especially people's jobs on what they're saying you can do, you can't do, you can't say you can't do, um, what you can post on social media, what you can't post on social media. Um and a lot of that stuff is violating people's religious rights. So, um, but we all have decisions that we need to make. But we learn the ways of God and what we should be living up to based on studying his word. Any thoughts, questions, or comments? I just want to say, when it comes to certain words in the Bible, like, just in general, men do tend to take it out and make their own little definition about it, and that's confusing a lot of people. I noticed, and I was like, that's, that's very dangerous. Oh, yeah. And they, and like, I don't want to say the love definition. We tend to think it's emotion, mm -hmm. but it's not. And I'm like, that really blew my mind because I'm like, dang, this whole time, like, I've been living, like, saying, like, oh, I can't love that person. That's too quick. And I'm like, it, it makes sense. Like, I love this person because I want to help this person or something mm -hmm. like that. I'm yeah. like, it's just, it's crazy how people can take things out contents or change just one word and just change the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Okay. So, going on, making the point that God is speaking directly to us, um, do not go through the motions of reading passages of scripture without truly attending to or focusing on the words you are reading. I think that's one of the big mistakes that people make. They just read it as words on paper, but they're really not paying attention to what he say because when God speaks he doesn't speak haphazardly every word was spoken for a particular reason and I can't just be like well I'm gonna ignore these couple of words and just only focus on that now yeah when you're reading and studying your mind tends to focus more on one thing than the other but if I'm adopting something as a principle or a lifestyle like with baptism I can't say I have to believe the word but I don't need to be baptized in water well you just deleted a whole bunch of passages so you just you just don't focus on that piece. Uh, so we got to take the sum of his word. We can't fragment it. And I, the way I heard somebody say it, I really like it. It's not a buffet. I put some things on my plate and eat it and other things I don't put on my plate. I got to take all of his word and put it on my plate and eat it. So, um... <laughs> I <said> I like <laughs> <buffets>. <laughs> uh, so... The next point I want to make is starting, oh, start taking every word of God in the Bible as a direct word from God to you. It's him talking to you. So a lot of times, like, I don't hear him speak. Just read the Bible. That's how you can get started hearing him speak. And then from there, it will branch over into you hearing rhema words, the Holy Spirit speaking. But um, we have to see it as him speaking directly to us. Um, we have to attend to it, we have to attend to what his word is saying. Actually, take it serious and do it. We have to incline our ear to what his word is saying. And when you incline your ear, that means to focus with commitment to the word of God you read and hear. So I'm hearing it, and now I'm going to be committed to practicing it. And like Donovan said in his lesson he taught on um, you know knowledge, understanding, and wisdom, that we have to listen to obey. That's why we read the Bible. That's why we study the Bible. So we can listen 
to obey it, not just read it and be like, huh, he said that. All right, I'm about to go do what I want to do. Just, just stop reading the Bible then. Just stop going to church. Just, it doesn't make any sense. Um, so before Trey reads the scripture that we're going to look at in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20 through 22, any thoughts, questions, or comments? Because I really had to change the way I was using the Bible, let's put it that way, um, before it really started to benefit my life. Okay. My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. Okay. So there's a lot here. Verse 20, as I stated earlier, we have to give attention to the words of God. When he says something, that needs to capture my attention, not just, oh, it go over my head. That's not important. I may do it. That's a nice suggestion. No, I have to give attention to it. And when you give attention to something, it's a priority in your life. It's the the air and stuff, mm-hmm. the, the vents. Um When you give attention to something, it is a priority in your life. So we have to make everything he says a priority. Um, Again, the next thing it says in 20 is incline your ear to my sayings. I'm making sure I'm focused to hear what is it that God has to say. Then I'm making sure I am not letting that depart from my eyes, meaning I'm ever going to keep what he says in front of my view, my gaze, my eyes. I'm going to read it. I'm going to study it. I'm going to meditate on that so I don't forget it. Because something, if something is that phrase, out of sight, out of mind. That's the word of God for a lot of people. They're not keeping his word before their eyes so they forget what he has to say and that they're not living or doing what he has to say. So we need to keep his word before our eyes and we need to keep it in the midst of our heart. So the heart is not talking about your beating physical heart. It's talking about your mind. I need to keep his word in the midst of my mind because if my eyes are ever on his word, it's going to constantly be in my thoughts. It's going to be constantly going to be in my remembrance. So um, when we do those things, his word will be life to us and it will be health to our body. So when people are not full of life, Zoe life, that's life living in abundance having the joy, having the peace, having also just vitality. I can tell you don't spend time with God because God is the word. And when you're chronically sick, I can tell you don't live by the word because you're not taking authority to experience that healing that he has for us. So thoughts, questions, comments on that. Okay. The next section we're going to move to in this lesson is reading, studying, and meditating. So we want to make sure we understand what those are. So before I even get to that, what do you guys think the difference is between reading something versus studying something versus meditating on something? Because to most people, those are all the same thing, and they're not. I used to think it's the same thing. But when it comes to reading, you just actually analyzing what's there in your face basically when you study and you actually take the time to go back and make sure you know this and you put in the work into actually reciting to other people or knowing what knowing what you can put out in front I'm just say it like that and it's 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 a long time it takes time I'm just say that it takes time okay anybody else Reading is just a quick overview of what you are instantly reading in the moment. Mm -hmm. Studying is reading, but more in depth, taking more time to figure out like every single word, and also drawing back other information and knowledge that we have read before to bring it all together. And then meditating is continuously going over something in your mind. Yeah, no, that's really good, both of you. Anybody else before I start teaching? Okay. Okay. All right. So, 
Um, the purpose of reading and studying the Bible is to learn and understand the mind of God on various subject matters that affect our lives. So again, that goes back to, am I using this Bible, which is a tool, effectively, properly for its, its intended use? Every time I pick this up, I should be picking it up with the intent to learn and understand the mind of God. How does he see things? How does he view things? How does he want things to go? How does he not want things to go? Because the whole point of me learning this is so that I can now adapt that same mindset and do what he does. Okay. That's why we read and study the Bible and meditate in it. The goal is to renew our mindset and our attitude by adopting God's principles and structure the very tenets of our lives on these principles, thus abandoning our current carnal world view. Because before we come to God and fully adapt and learn his ways, we got a lot of world views that we need to uproot up out of us. People see things a certain way, you know, um, when it comes to whether it's homosexuality or whether it comes to witchcraft or whether it comes to unforgiveness, you know, something, some, I hear people say some things are just unforgivable. Well, that's a worldview because that's definitely not God's view because God says we have to forgive everybody. And it's stuff just that simple. And that could seem like a small thing because we always want to make murder or homosexuality just horrendous, but unforgiveness is horrendous. So... If I don't view things with the same weight value that God views it, that's also going to mess me up in life. Because I value these things very little, but these things I value very greatly. But then when I put it on God's scale, I learn that my weight system is all wrong. It's all off. That means my whole life is going to be off. So we need to make sure we are uprooting these worldviews. And that's throughout life. You know, you start to come across things in God's word and you're like, whoa. I didn't realize I didn't agree with that. Let me uproot this out of me. And whoa, I didn't realize I had this in me. Let me uproot that out. That is the journey. Um, so we are to be transformed by our time in the word of God. That's why we read the Bible. That's why we study the Bible. And that's why we meditate in the Bible so that we can be transformed. Because there's no other way that transformation is going to happen in our lives unless we're spending time in this word and actually changing the way we think, changing the way we speak, and changing the way we behave. Um, and this is how you can see people day in and day out go to church. It could be every Sunday. I don't care. Go to every Bible class. And your life is not transformed. That's ridiculous. For you to spend that much time in something and not be transformed. You're not doing it right. So just because you do something don't mean you're doing it right. You can do a lot of something and put a lot of effort into something and do it all wrong. So let me pause there. Any thoughts, questions, or comments? I do. I saw something on Facebook last night. And I didn't think post it. But I was like, how do we have the same like kind of upbringing and you think this way? But somebody basically was like, it's whether you struggle with something or not, da da da, God knows my it's the whole God knows my heart thing. Oh, they were okay. trying to expound on it. And I'm like, no, it don't that don't matter. Just because God knows your heart don't mean you can continue inactively struggling in your sin. And when I say inactively I mean like not doing not taking decisive action to stop and or do something to to get out of it. Like but just because you think well, you think he does. I like. I know that this is wrong, and I know I'm not supposed to be doing this. So God, in my heart, it's like no, like because you're still actively struggling and doing that. So you're gonna be held accountable for it. It's not a God knows my heart situation. I was just like, how do you think that? And then the thing that made it even worse was that it was something that the post. You know how on Facebook, if you post something years ago, you can go back and repost it, and it'll say like. Oh, Three years ago, it was like that kind of post. And I'm like, you cannot right. still think this way. Right. Like, you thought that uh, two years ago, and you still think this way? Wow. That's not good. Yeah, there's so no growth. Like, yeah. I was like, okay, bro, go ahead. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I was shook. 
that was a reason for it. Right. <laughs> it was recent because they reposted it again. And I was oh, like, okay. using the same spot. Your mindset has not changed, clearly, because you reposted your own stuff. Like, it's the best thing ever. Like, I was shocked. And it's interesting because that's why God gave us the word. Because he knows our heart. And he's like, it ain't right. Yeah. Here's my word. Here's truth. Because right. what you in is lies. What exactly. you in is deception. So, mm-hmm. yeah, that's that. I want to say something about that. Speaking about Facebook. Because I, I noticed that a lot of people get their word from Facebook. Really? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, they believe anything on Facebook. And what I mean by that is <laughs> they think they say by type amen <laughs> if you know this is going to happen to you. Share this post if you if you feel like blessings coming towards you. I'm like, what is, y'all really? Mm-hmm. It's what you call those old chain letters. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, people really fall into this. And I'm like, that, this don't make no sense because y'all rather do this than actually take the time out to see yeah. what God has for you or something like that. I'm like, yeah. This is I, it just frustrates me because people really go to Facebook. I'm sorry, someone on my eyebrow. People really go to Facebook and get their word. And I'm just they word. It's not wow. even the right word. Okay? Yeah. It's just what? ridiculous. You said what? I said you called them out though. Made a post yeah, like, it's not y'all make think no Facebook sense. gonna save y'all? It's not. <laughs> <laughs> y'all need to be baptized. A comment under this, and nobody provide. <laughs> exactly. So, when, when they like type Amen, everybody. Amen, Amen. I'm like, this don't make the post Michael It was funny that you said that because I saw one the other day, and they're they're getting so bad. Like you know, have, at first it'd be like, oh, you gonna miss your blessing if you don't share this. Yeah. I saw one the other day. It was like, all right, people to the people who don't share. I was like, yeah, exactly. Like, that over me because I ain't sharing yes, no meme. Right, yeah, they yeah. getting crazy with those chain things. Oh I was like, wow, y'all are something else. You really think you gonna die if you don't share this? Okay. Wow. It's the main source. The yeah. <laughs> so it's it's definitely sad. <laughs> so let's talk about reading the Bible. So I know everybody gave their definitions, which were good. Um, reading the Bible. The, uh, this only involves carefully looking at God's word with the purpose to discover what he said and inspire it to be written. So reading is more of a discovery because like Andrew and Mardesia said, you're not taking time to dive deep to make sure you understand the meaning of words and blah, 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 which I'm going to get to in just a second. But it's just more like an initial, oh, I'm aware now. I came to this discovery. It's an awareness. Studying the Bible involves reading God's word with the purpose to know and understand. So when I read, it's more like a discovery, an awareness. When I study, it's so that I really know and I really understand. Studying involves using additional tools such as a dictionary, because we need to make sure we understand what terms are. Mm-hmm. Like, we all know there's times in our walk where we're just like, I don't know what that word is, but I'm about to keep going. And you yeah. just keep reading. <laughs> all right, well, you just lost all, you just lost the meaning in that message right you there. Exactly. <laughs> so and it, the Lord it would be like, you cannot do this, Tremiko. Stop <laughs> and understand what this word be if you really want to know what I'm saying. And it was like, oh, okay. And that word be pivotal too. Yeah, it do. <laughs> Sometimes you think it's just like a really, oh, this word really don't matter. And it 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 really does. Ooh, that's how we talk, you know? Because they teach us to use, I'm sorry. No, no, you're good. Because they teach us to use content clues. And what I mean by that is they, they tell you to read, if you don't know the word, read around it, and you will figure out that word soon. Oh, you get what okay. I'm saying? Yeah. Gotcha. And I'm like, hmm. Well, when you just read, that's good. But when you study, that's not good. <laughs> yeah. They don't teach that. So Andrew, I thought I was the only one that heard that before. I was like, oh my gosh. That's they used to say that in school. Read around it. <laughs> Interesting. No, and I have heard that, but I guess I never really practiced that. Because just even in studying in school, with me like striving to be like a straight A student and stuff like that, I always knew I had to go deeper. So I guess, you know, I heard that, but it was just like, that's not going to help me. Because I got to understand this to pass this test. So these context And for me, it was different because I was like, okay, I struggled when I was in school with like reading and comprehending. So I'm like, oh, the teacher says skip it. 
So, oh, yeah, I was yeah. asking a lot of words. <laughs> so that was so, a license for you to be like, cool. <laughs> exactly. And then as I got older, I guess I was like, dang, no, this this is the stupidest thing. I don't know why they told me that. Because now you got to, like, try to go back and, mm-hmm. yeah, that's the dumbest thing ever. I don't know why they telling students that. Yeah. The meat test. Yeah, when, when my uh, daughter was in uh, first grade, uh, I would go to the school to be uh, uh, assistant, teacher's assistant. And they had, the teacher told me, if the child, whatever the child calls the word, that's what it is for them. Do not correct them. What? I had to stop working there because uh, I required my children to that ain't the word if it's wrong it's wrong you know (laughs) exactly wow no they did not that sounds like something they do nowadays in 2020 if if that's it for them then that's it like no there is a way to say the word and there is a condition for this word exactly wow i think it was more for test taking too but like they never specifically said this is for test taking because like you can't have your dictionary in test and so they're like okay use your context to figure out what the word means but in any other setting, you can just take out a dictionary and look. So that yeah, you know, I mean, context, context clues has a real purpose, but context clues isn't meant to be like I don't know this. I'm just make something up. Like context clues <laughs> is meant to be okay. I see what this is saying before this word, and I see what it's saying after that word, and based on that, I can infer yeah. that this word means this. Yeah, Th- like there's actual science to it, but like that's it for them. Like no, that is <laughs> mind boggling to me. But they taught it like it was like a definite thing, but they didn't specify it was. Oh really? For yeah. test taking. Maybe it depends on what school you went to. Yeah, that has a lot to do with it. Because context clues for me in my school was different. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Say like noisome. Never knew what that word meant until it's like, oh yeah, the noisome scent made her feel very ill. Ill. You always say words that I don't know. Bad word. Is it bad <laughs> Noisome. Is it bad Noisome is a bad <laughs> scent. See? Context clues. See, that's what context clues. What'd you say? What'd you say, right there? That's how you use context clues. He said the noisome scent made her feel sick. So I'm like, the noisome mean bad smell? Oh, okay. He's like, yeah. And I'm like, ooh, context clues. I don't know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. But that's the proper way you do context clues. Yes. Uh-uh. You learned something? All right. <laughs> All right, so again, when we're studying, um, we're going deeper, so we're getting out dictionaries. Um, You should be using Hebrew and Greek lexicons, especially when it comes to the Bible, to make sure we're really understanding. Old Testament would be in Hebrew. New Testament is in Greek. Um, Also, thesauruses. It's good to have a thesaurus so that you can know other spinoff words that mean the same thing. So... When you're studying, you are using tools like that, and it doesn't have to be hardback addic- uh, um, additions. You can use, you know, um, electronic devices. There are dictionaries. Yep, dictionary.com. There's, and that has both the, the thesaurus and the dictionary. You have, um, what do we use now for um, Blue Letter Bible, which has the Greek and Hebrew lexicon, or Study Light, which has the Greek and Hebrew lexicon. So I've switched when I first started. The online twos were not that big, so I had, like, the actual books. But now I'm just all online because it's just quicker. It's on the go. If you're somewhere, you can just pull it up real quick. You don't have to be like, dang, I got to wait till I get home to get my actual book and look it up. So um, just know there are all these tools available, and we will be going through that at the end of this lesson with those online resources are and what some books could be. Uh, but, again, we're using all of these things to make sure that we are understanding the word meanings and uses of words to comprehend the message God is conveying. Because as we just talked about, which I'm glad Charlene said what she said, and you know everyone added to that conversation, if you're not using words properly, your understanding is just all wrong, which means now you're going to go in the wrong direction in life. So it is not okay. It is not appropriate to understand a, a word incorrectly and use that incorrect definition of that word through life. No. Yeah, you lead people astray. There's yourself. There's miscommunications going on now when you talk to people. It's just all bad. When you talk to God, there's miscommunications because God <laughs> going to use that word. And it mean one thing to God and it mean one thing to you. So, not good. So, in addition to reading and studying the word of God, it is critical to meditate on the word of God. That which you have read and studied day and night. So we're going to look at scriptures first about meditation, and then I'm going to go into defining meditation. 
So we're going to go to Joshua chapter 1, verse 8, and we're looking at that in the New King James Version. Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. All right, so we see here, as we've looked at the scripture many times in this class, that you need to meditate in God's word day and night. Meditating in God's word is different from simply reading God's word. And meditating in God's word day and night is somewhat different from studying. Because when you study, you really are meditating because you're taking a lot of time to just divulge and um, wrap your mind around it. Um, let's also look at Psalm chapter 1, verse 2 and 3. Psalm chapter 1, verses 2 and 3. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. So again, day and night. We need to be meditating. And both scriptures let us know the key to prospering in this walk in life is knowing the word of God through meditating in the word of God. So if we're not thriving, if we're not prospering, we need to examine ourselves to see are we meditating in the word of God day and night. Um, and again, just know it takes time to get out of holes that you've been in. So you can't be like, oh, 24 hours, I'm not thriving, I'm not prospering. No, it's going to take you some time. But over time, when you look back, like um, Leah just made that point, you got a post from three years ago to see where you was three years ago. Are you still in that same place? Because you haven't thrived or prospered. You still in that same place. There should be growth. I should look at that post from three years ago, cracking up like, dang, I was dumb. Yeah. Dang, I'm glad I ain't okay. there no more. <laughs> Not like, I wasn't. Yeah, exactly. I was on the <laughs> he said I was on the sofa. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. All right. So through meditation, your mind will be stayed on what you have been reading and studying. As a result, you will begin to hear God as he speaks to your spirit man, but your mind will register it as spontaneous thoughts that will pop in your mind. So I think that's also key because the more you meditate in God's word, the more you start to hear God talking. And it's not that necessarily he wasn't talking. It's just that now you focus on him. And when you focus on somebody, you can more clearly hear them speak. So these spontaneous thoughts are God speaking to you further giving you revelation and wisdom on his word. And there have been a lot of times when I would read something and just, it stuck with me. And I just started meditating in that. And the more I meditated, God started opening up my understanding more on that topic or more on that subject and giving me more revelation and understanding. And it's like, wow, this is, this is amazing. So here's what meditation is. Meditation is to, I'm going to give you five points. Meditation is... Focusing your attention on the word to the point it never leaves your conscience. You're just wrapping it around your mind. You're revolving it around your mind. It's to ponder. And that's what ponder is, to revolve something around your mind over and over. You're imagining it. And with our imagination, we don't just see words. We actually see images. So allow yourself to go there and see what God's word is actually saying but then make it personal. See it in your life as an actual reality. To mutter or utter the word of God. That's also considered meditation when I just quietly repeat his word over and over, or softly repeat his word over and over. I don't have to be loud walking through the grocery store. Yay, when I walk through the street. Yeah. No, it's, no, and some people, it's, it's, it's just like, you can quietly, do these things. You don't have to be loud. Uh, the fifth thing is to keep in mind, when you keep or fix his word in your thoughts, you're going over it and over it and over it and over it. That's meditation. So let me pause there. Are there any thoughts, questions, or comments about that? The reading. Hey, really quick. Yep. 
I just wanted to make sure I got it right. So the first one was uh, focusing on the word, pondering, um, allowing yourself, uh, allowing your mind to um, imagine. Envision, imagine it over yep. and over again. Yep. And then the other one, the yep. second one is to utter or repeat. You can do that. You know, you don't have to be in a grocery store yelling. I heard that. Yep. Um, <laughs> over and over again to yourself. You only said two. Well, the last thing. So it was the first one was focus your attention on the word of God to the point it never leaves your conscience. Okay. This, and let me know if I need to slow down. The second. Slow down. One, okay. Slow down. So that one was focus your attention focus on the word. Attention. To the, the point. Word. Okay. Um, it never leaves your conscience. Mm-hmm. Oh, baby crying. And then the, the second. The, sure now, so that's why I was like, I didn't get it all. <laughs> no, and um, uh, Trey's putting in the chat right now. Ponder was the second one. Oh, okay. Then go ahead. Trey, can you just put it all in there and yeah. I'll just do that? Okay, so. I'm Thank going. you. All right. <laughs> I'm just going to talk it out while he do that, though, so it's just not silent, because I can't go off the slide. So, um, the third one was imagine. The fourth one was to mutter or utter the word, and again, mutter or utter, you're, again, you're, like, just doing it softly to yourself. It's not the intention for other people to hear you. The intention is for you and your subconscious to hear you. And the uh, fifth one was keep or fix God's word in your thoughts. You're basically just going over it, over it, and over it, and over it. So, um, no problem, Charlene. I don't remember. Eli? No, who? Eli. Eli. Um, I remember we did a deliverance. Eli was yelling. You had the boom to silent. You don't have to yell. Like, like the demons hear you just yeah just, you've been yelling out but you learn but you do you learn that like i learned wrong i learned you got to stare at them all me and you gotta yell and it's just like no you don't have to do any of that laughing at you. i know like, whereas if you're sitting there like this you're probably like oh, i gotta get out so um but yeah so it's not in the volume it's in the authority that you say it in Okay, so before you get started, let's talk about that. Before you get started on studying the Word of God, um, this is a section, um, I know Donovan wrote this, so if he's there and you want to add stuff, definitely do so. Um, So let's talk about, before you get started on studying the Bible, we have to realize, one, we all come into this with implicit biases. There's biases that we pick up along the way in life, wrong ways of thinking, things that we more so lean to than other. And we're going to have to make sure that we stop leaning to things that we shouldn't be leaning to. So talking about implicit biases, before you begin to study the Bible, you must accept that you have a bias in regards to its content. Having a bias is not your fault. Everyone has it and it's developed over time through traditions incorrect teaching, preconceptions, and experiences. Any bias you have can and will misinterpret the scripture you are about to digest. So that is really important to know. When I start studying the Bible, I can't come from my traditional perspective and when I read it and it don't match, I'm gonna bend it to my traditional perspective. Um, making images of Christ white. That's your bias. You been in that to look like you. That ain't. That's not what he looked like. So that's just an example. If anybody need to understand what a bias is, I'm going to make it fit and lean more so to what I'm comfortable with, or to what I look like, or to what I was taught. And if it goes against that, doesn't matter. I'm gonna bend it to fit that, or I'm going to be against what I'm getting ready to read because. Is not matching my preconceived notions and my biases. I don't know if you have anything to add to that before I keep going down there. I would just add, like, understand that with your your biases when studying scripture, that if you go into your study open to the fact that you could be wrong about something, mm. 
that you could have misunderstood something, that you could have been taught something wrong, you will find your study so much more insightful and beneficial. The problem people have is they take their implicit bias into studying. And then like Tremiko just said, they get offended through scripture. And because they went in scripture with, I know what it says. I understand. I have the knowledge, prideful, arrogant, and they don't humble themselves. That's when you start getting those scriptural, those strongholds, that, that spiritual blindness, because you're putting yourself and what you believe to be true above what God is saying is true. It's good. It's good. So um, I'm going to keep reading here. And even if you are comfortable with the text, you could miss additional revelation God wishes for you to glean. A good way to begin is to clear your mind of what you believe, you know, and understand of the topic. So just go in as a blank slate. Come to God as a child who needs to be led. Who needs to be? I need to pick that. Who needs to be led in the right direction? Allow God to tell you what is there instead of looking to confirm what you believe it should be. And I believe that's real key. When we go in, like when I started studying a topic on judgment or anything. I'm not going into this like, yeah, this is what I know, and I'm about to pull scriptures to solidify what I know. No. My, I'm going into this. I don't know. Lower judgment. Teach me. I want to make sure I'm getting this right. Show me what your judgment really is. What does that look like? And then I just start reading scriptures as he starts to lead and guide me. And I'm like, oh, okay, let me write that down. Oh, okay, let me write that down. Oh, and I have all this wealth of material. Now let me categorize it. And that's just something as a teacher. We start to categorize things so that in my study, for me, I need it all like structured and organized so that my thoughts are organized. But I'm going into this like, I, Lord, I don't know. What do you have to say on this? Versus, Lord, this is what you got to say on it. Now just show me all the scriptures that prove what I believe. No, <laughs> that's the wrong way. So does that make sense to everybody? So here's a question before I go forward. When, when you do, and I know everyone here is learning how to get better at studying, but when you do start to sit down and read or study something, do you go into it as, you know what, Lord, I know I got some knowledge on this, but I'm about to go into this like I don't know nothing. Show me. Or do you go in like, I got it. Just help me out. Okay. I gotta take my time too. I can't just read a whole bunch of stuff as well. Yeah. So I can't, cause that'd be too much cramming in my head trying to focus on so many things. So I gotta take my time. Okay, good. For me, I always tell the Lord, show me, cause I don't know. Like, I just start off like that just so I can comprehend all of it. And I just keep repeating the scripture. I know that sounds weird, but I have to keep reading it over and over again so that way I can grasp it, grasp it. And then, or until I get the revelation, or else I won't get it. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. That's not weird, by the way. That's not weird. It's not weird. It's like karma. I think you learn more when you admit that you don't know mm -hmm. everything. Yep. You know, I whether you're learning from another person or, or from, you know, studying the Bible. Really good point. Absolutely. And uh, I like the uh, what's called where a fool thinks he knows everything, but a wise man knows that he knows nothing. It's good. Like, for me, it's the same way. Like, I go in like, Lord, you're going to have to show me. Like, I'll get to a certain point. Like, all right, Lord, I I know my biases are, like, starting to jump forward. So, God, you have to show me what this means because this is, I don't understand this. Yeah, Absolutely. Absolutely. Good. Okay. Um, and, and again, that's another reason why simple things. <coughs> Baptism is important. People are biased to the belief that it's not. Or that God is three separate individuals instead of one person. I'm showing you 5,000 scriptures where he said he won, but you're like, nah, he three. I mean, that's a bias. Like, you are unwilling to bend yeah. to what you believe. You are unwilling to just chalk it up and be like, maybe I don't know what I think I know. Show me. So when you come in like that, 
It is like, because I've told the story before. I initially believed he was one. Then I read something and got confused. And I was like, nah, I see that perspective. He, he could be three, too. He probably is three. Maybe I had it all wrong. And I was just confused at that point. And I just had to really come to God and be like, Lord, I don't know. Show me. Teach me. I'm about to go on this fast. I need you to, to make this clear because I'm really confused right now. And I knew that this was a pivotal point in my walk with him, and I got to get this right. And he showed me. So, but I came to him like, I need you to show me, not like, I need you to solidify what I already believe, or I'm going down a road that I already believe. So, and to uh, add to that, there's a difference between, like, once you have gotten a revelation, once you do fully understand and you have convictions about that, you no longer, there's not a situation where you, well, I need to be open to an incorrect perspective. Yeah. And I just want to make sure I threw that in there. That's good. Uh, and using the example of the, he's one versus the, the, you know, he's three. The reason why we can have conviction about that is because all of the scriptural support for it. But when you look at the Trinitarian doctrine, and they're saying that he's three distinct people existing eternally, like none of that framing is in scripture. Like you're creating a, defini a definition of who God is that is not found in scripture. Right. Trinity is not found in scripture. Trinitarian is not found in scripture. Three and one is not found in scripture. Does everybody understand that distinction? Speak up so you can hear you. He came. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I didn't really okay. say it like that. Because I'm like, I don't think he can see y'all. Like, <laughs> I got to be open to wrong teaching. <laughs> yeah, and that's what gets a lot of people. And I try to do my best to let people know, no, that's not correct. But that's another worldview. You have to be open to different mindsets and perspectives and just collect all this wrong teaching and then sit back and figure out what the truth is. No, if you would collect all the wrong teaching, you wouldn't have to sit back and figure out what the truth is. That is when I've seen people lose their mind and go astray because they collected too much wrong information and now they're gone. Stick to the truth and only read the truth. So you don't have to, as Donovan said, which is an excellent point. Once you know the truth, don't go in the forest to get lost. We wouldn't have to send sheriffs to come find you if you didn't go into that forest. So like them little dumb people every year go out on the ice and then the emerging people got if you didn't go out on the ice we wouldn't have to risk our lives to come get you mm -hmm. just stop doing dumb stuff so if that makes sense okay what'd you say i'm gonna say all through revelation it says it's one wrong because some people actually think it's a it's three three well they, i guess they think the other two are just sitting on the other <laughs> one on each side i just i just it's just dumb i don't understand <laughs> Uh, okay, so still now we're going to be talking about, so that was implicit biases. We got to understand, we all come into this walk with God with them, and so we need to be as children and just be like, I don't know, Lord God. Start me from scratch. Start to teach me. I'm a blank slate. I'm a blank page. I'm an empty vessel. Pour into me. Write the new story on me. Fill me up. Okay, let's talk about context. Context, context. Okay, so, uh huh. I said clues. <laughs> I think I'm sorry. No, you're fine. So, in order to fully grasp studying the Bible, you must understand that it is both a historical document and the Word of God. The Bible not only covers the spiritual text God inspired many to write but also the history of Israel, Jesus Christ, and the early church. Not understanding the history around a text can lead you to misunderstand God's voice. So we got to understand context. In addition, scriptures in the Bible are not written in a vacuum, in isolation, in a silo. Whatever word works best for you to understand. God may have inspired different off, so we're going to change that, um, different scribes throughout the text, but it is his word being written. When trying to understand the context around a topic or person in scripture, you can't just read one or two scriptures. 
you must search for all relevant texts within the Bible to fully understand God's mind on the topic. So when we write lessons and we do baptism, when we write lessons and we talk about judgment, when we write lessons and we talk about witchcraft, when we write lessons and we talk about what wisdom is or knowledge is, we not pulling like one or two texts and like, boom, it's a lesson. We're going to base our lives on this. No, Donovan and I, and as Trey is doing stuff, as Rodasia is doing stuff, Andrew, y'all all do y'all own personal ministries and stuff like that. Y'all are taking the wealth of scripture or learning to take the wealth of scripture. Okay, if it's going to be baptism, let me put that word baptism in. Let me find every scripture that says baptism. Okay, the contest is, is talking about water. Getting in, let me pull all them scriptures and see if I'm missing something that has to do with water. Let me pull all the scriptures that say something to do about Holy Spirit. Let me pull all the scriptures that have something to do about speaking in tongues. And now it becomes this big puzzle and mission of, okay, let me start to eliminate scriptures that don't fit what I'm talking about. Because I just got, gathered everything that had to do on this subject. And now let me windle it down to the actual topic I'm focused on. And then from there, once I'm left with just only those scriptures on that specific topic, I can now see everything he had to say and see it as one big picture. Not just, I took one piece from the game, but there are like 50 other pieces in the box I left in there. You'll never know what he actually had to say on it. So that's what that means. Does that make sense? And is everyone doing that or starting to do that? Because I know, again, we're now learning because everyone wants to get better at studying. Does that make sense? That that's what we need to be doing when we study. Which, that takes a lot of time. I'm not going to lie. That's not like no one, two, three process. I do, do that. Okay. get more than three scriptures or more than two scriptures as I can. But I don't like try to give somebody four lessons <clears throat> on certain things. You I'm said sorry. you don't try to do what? I'm sorry. I don't, I don't try to give somebody like a lesson. Okay. Well, yeah. not even other people, just yourself. Because oh. before you go try to teach anybody oh, else, yeah, you, you well, yourself need to know. I'm so using, what are you doing? Uh, the rubric, the... I'm just bringing it up. The, okay. Um, I yeah. use this a lot. Now. Sheet, you know. yeah. yeah, and it's really helping me to study. Oh, I didn't know I grabbed two. Okay. I don't know if oh, okay. That... Uh, yeah, that camera right there. I don't know if I can see it. Or Trey. I can, I can put they it see in my you. Yeah, Trey. Okay, <laughs> Trey. So I use this, and it helped me a lot. So I'm trying to like. So that's that chart that has all the scriptures. Child's the material for laminating them. Yeah. Well, you know, that's probably old now because I just made an update yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always updating that thing. But you find the majority of them stay the same. I just changed okay. like one or two things. I mean, the whole. Well, thing we'll just buy a laminator so we can just have our own. <laughs> Cause she gonna keep changing it. Yeah, the updated one is on the website. Mm -hmm. So, but um, and just hand that to me, just cause now everybody's like, what the heck she changed? Uh, I don't want that to be a thing. What I added was just so y'all know, under the section um, number three, it says water baptism. Once you get to the middle part, it says baptize in Jesus' name, and then it says right under that name of the Lord is Jesus. I added a few more scriptures there and moved a couple of scriptures up. Okay. So, doing the baptism and then showing that the the Lord's name is Jesus. Because I'm editing the gather talks that we did on being born again, mm -hmm. and I had to find some scriptures, and I was like, dang, that would be great to add on the chart. So even as we do gather talks, and I got to edit and add scriptures and stuff. If I find things that would be good to add to the chart that's not here, that's what I'm doing. Because this is a work in progress. The yeah, the chart is. So just know that. So the updated version of that chart is on the website. But I use this to help you stay. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, so that's good because a lot of the scriptures are already there. There's more than one, two, three scriptures there. But just know as you all are continuing your studies, um, pull, try to pull everything that the Bible has to say on that topic and then digest all of that. Okay. Um, okay, so... So, Tamika, before you move on, yep. I have a question. Mm -hmm. So... Me personally, when doing that, so pulling all the scripture, I, I guess that's where I kind of get, I don't want to say overwhelmed with the scriptures because there'd be so many sometimes yeah. and they'd be saying yeah. different things and then interpret different things in different ways. So how do you, like from a teaching standpoint, make the, 
I don't know how to say that word. Differentiation. Yeah, what Donovan said. Um, between what works and doesn't, when it all sometimes say the same thing, if that makes sense. So let me see if I can take an easy topic to explain it. Um, let's take speaking in tongues and that being a sign. Because that's like an actual thing I study. So let's say if I just start pulling all scriptures that have tongues in it. Once I get all my scriptures, if there are a number of scriptures that had nothing to do with people using tongues to speak, it's just tongues because that was their language and that's what it was trying to describe. I can eliminate all of that because I'm specifically focused on people speaking with tongues through the Holy Spirit. So once I collect all those scriptures, yeah, it's a lot. But here's the thing, too. As I start to go through all the scriptures, because literally what I do, and we'll get to this later, but I'm just going to go ahead and start going through the process now. I will go on Bible Gateway, and if there's a search, I will start with my word search. I'll put one word in. And when I put that one word in, it's going to bring that one word up that's in every single book of the Bible with all the scriptures. I get my pad, or if you electronic, you can get your computer, throw up a second window, put up a, pull up a Word document, and I start reading through all of those scriptures. And I only write down. That's one way you can eliminate having all a bunch of scriptures that you got to now go back. I'm going to sift through it now. So I read every scripture. Nope, that ain't what I'm looking for. Nope, that ain't what I'm looking for. Yeah, that, that is. Let me write that down. Nope, nope, nope. Yep, let me write that down. Nope, nope, nope. Yep, let me write that down. Now, once I'm done with this process, and he's putting it on his screen, you can see for what you looked up, Holy? Yeah, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. So you can see now. Thank you, Trey. You're just awesome. I'm <laughs> thinking like that. It, that shows you on that sidebar, it's showing you Old Testament, how many words would have that, New Testament. And now what he got to do, Look at all the scriptures in Exodus. Look at all the scriptures in Psalm. Look at all the scriptures in every single one. And he's going to have his little notepad. And he's going to write down every one that's related to what he's focused on. Now once he collects all those scriptures, he can now go back and really start to digest them. So what I do, and everybody different, it depends on your learning style. I will literally get all of those scriptures on a word doc or something like that and have the entire scripture. And even as I'm going through, I try to start, because in my mind, I'm really analytical. I start to try to categorize it. So now do I want to look at Holy Spirit in the sense of leading, Holy Spirit in the sense of giving people power, Holy Spirit in the sense of, it, you know, it, you, it comes with tongues as a sign. I start to categorize everything because now it's not so overwhelming if I take these, let's say, 20 scriptures and break them out into categories, if they fit into categories of four or categories of three or whatever. And then from there, that's how I really started writing lessons. And that's how my lessons have subsections because this section is focused on this. And this section is focused on that. And then this section, we're going to talk about this. And that's how my lessons end up being 100 pages <laughs> in PowerPoint. <laughs> Because now we got to break all these sections out, and now we got to add more explanations to this. So now when I have all the scriptures and category, I can now go back and just really take my time and start meditating on each scripture per category and see if the Lord going to give me more revelation on that. You know, tell me more. Or does that scripture, And because this happens a lot, that one scripture out of 20, when I start looking at the references, It'll lead me to three more scriptures that I had no clue about. Now I got to take these scriptures for this one scripture, and I keep doing that with every scripture to see if I can get more context, more understanding. Because, and again, that's another reason how the lessons get so long. Because I had no clue these three scriptures were related to this one scripture, but I need to know these three scriptures to get a better full understanding of this one scripture. Now I understand this better. Let's go to scripture number two. Scripture number two could have ten scriptures that go with that one. All right, so now we build in. I started out with 20. Now I'm quickly at 50 or 60 or 100, you know. So that's just an example. And it may not even be that many sometimes with some topics or whatever, but that's studying. And that's. And to like, add to that, this is just outside of like creating a lesson. This is how you really start to get revelation on the complexities of the things of God. So, for example, sticking with 
talking about speaking in tongues. This is why so many people are confused about the tongues that Paul is referencing with the gift of diverse tongues versus the tongues that you receive once you get the Holy Spirit because they're just taking that one scripture in a vacuum and saying, see here, Paul said that everybody's going to be speaking in tongues. But had you gone through the same process that Jamiko just laid out, you will see all these different scriptures and see, well, one, I understand that God does not contradict himself. So these must be two different types of tongues that are, that are talking about. So what I have to do is I have to now categorize scriptures that aligns up with those two different types of subjects that scripture is talking about. Awesome. So make sense of your questions? Nefertiri, does that help? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't even hear that part. I'm listening to... <laughs> I heard everything you said. Sorry. No, does that help? The child. Yes, it does help. Okay, cool. And what I was doing wrong was, uh, Donovan, while you were talking, Donovan just uh, said something, too. Um, I said out loud, he was saying for me, what I was doing was I was getting all the scriptures. So what you just did, put in the word, all the scriptures that come out. Y'all, I was doing the last step. I would try to see the different versions that the one scripture come in for each particular scripture no, and i think no. that's why i was gonna when i was going yeah. to the last step verses and i would be like oh my gosh it's like three different versions what is this saying then i would try to break that down so that's what it was gotcha yeah you want to drill it down then start to now deep dive into each other mm -hmm. yeah cool show what i did so trey's gonna read uh, I'm going to shut up. He's going to take over. Shelf, what are you doing? Okay. Mm -hmm. So I just typed in uh, Holy Spirit into the search bar. Oh, search bar, right? Yeah. Oh. And then it'll... Mm. Uh, Sorry. Hold on. Let me get in the class. And while you guys are doing that, Chumiko, in this lesson, are you going to go over Blue Letter Bible? Because I tried to do a YouTube tutorial. Watch that. I'm struggling. Okay. We can do that. We can definitely do that. Since we can share screens and all of that. Yep. Huh? Make a YouTube video? Oh, okay. I agree. YouTube video, because there's no good tutorial on that. If you have time, you already have a lot on your plate, so. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Like, I just typed in Holy Spirit into the search bar. Um, down here, it'll show you all the... Uh, times that Holy Spirit or Holy or Spirit comes up in the Bible, you can even go to topical, and it'll tell you about, like, adoption of the Holy Spirit, uh, baptism of the Holy Spirit, all the scriptures that are related to that. Uh, so, yeah. And then, I'll just go back to Bible. And then you see how many, when it shows up in books like Exodus, all in the Old Testament, and all times that it shows up in the New Testament in the different Gospels and different um, letters in the Bible. So that's how you can. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure the world is not understanding because they're not deep diving like this. Because mm -hmm. it takes a lot of deep diving and like really self effort. And if you're not doing it, you won't understand. Absolutely. People just want to come to church on Sunday, get a snack, and go home. They ain't trying to do all of this. And that's why they don't know nothing. I would also say it takes a. I'll add that if. And this goes for, you know, everybody and gather like, you know, we each have all, you know, our different learning styles and, you know, how best people receive information. But I would say right now, like if you don't have a detailed process of how you're whittling down scripture, you're not studying. Like if, if you are under the thinking that you can just open the Bible and just read it and that's it, you will. And I'm confident in saying this, you will never grow in knowledge, understanding, and wisdom, nor will you be able to receive complex revelation from God. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Right, David? I was just going to also say, I feel like this also takes a stamina build in terms of like being able to sit there and go through it because I know when I first started doing this, and I've started over like 72 times because I just haven't found a good way yet for me to be able to go through it and then also like keep track of what I've gone, I've gone through. I don't know why I didn't think to either write down the scriptures I've already gone through and that are related to the topic I'm studying. 
I said, I'd be like, all right, I remember this one. Then we go back to this one. Then I like write them in different places. I need to concise that. Anyways, that's my problem. But taking us, it takes a stamina filled up to like going through all the scriptures that aren't related and being able to sit through them and and then as you study more broader topics, you have more and more scriptures to go through. And even though like it's really intriguing sometimes, like I'll go for a really long time, and they're like, you need to take a break, because if you don't take a break, you go kind of burn yourself out and doing this and so. Yeah. Now I just had a thought, so let me ask if, if this is needed or not needed. Um, Cause this would be more like workshop stuff. Um, so it could be boring, it could not be boring, but it could be very helpful. Um, so I probably wouldn't record it. Um, but do we want to, as a class, come up with a topic to do like a little mini lesson on, and then from start to finish, we do that all together on a Sunday. And we go through this whole, everything we teach, and after I'm done, we go through so you can see step by step what's really happening. Yes. Do you find that beneficial? Yes. Okay, so. Sorry, my phone muted. Can you, what did you just say? <laughs> I said, uh, stop would it be beneficial if, as a class, we come up with a topic that we want to do, like, a little small lesson on, and we use that as everything we're learning right now about how to study from start to finish, like we go on Bible Gateway, we put that word in, do the search. We literally sit here together, go scripture to scripture, and say, see how this doesn't apply, so we would ditch that scripture. See how that don't apply, we would ditch that scripture. Okay, this one does apply to our topic, so we would keep this scripture. Like, we would literally do this from start to finish. That way you can see how you would study the Bible to now get comprehension on a topic or even write a lesson. Awesome. I like that idea. Okay. So be thinking about, just throw out, you know, in the chat, different, and in the class, y'all can throw that out afterwards, different topics, and then, you know, I'll pick one, and then we'll do that. So we'll get through this whole lesson first, so you can have the wealth of knowledge, and then we'll go back and apply it. So maybe that could be part two of this, starting in the new year, that's what we do. So it'll be more project-related than we are going through a bunch of scriptures and stuff like that. Because I want to make sure... I think that's very important that we all know how to study. We all know what to do. And the best way really is to just do it. I can't really talk you through it. Yeah. Even like he was showing you different stuff and we were looking at it, but it's different when you actually do it. So we're going to actually do it. What's it kinetic so. learners? Is that what it's called? Kinetic is like kinesthetic and it's hands-on. Okay. I think it's kinesthetic, not kinetic. Because kinetic is a type of energy. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. Kinetic, I thought was energy. I'm just going to say the same. Okay. All right, so continuing, because I didn't finish with the context. So we're still talking about context, context, context. So let me just kind of start here and go back down. I know I said a little bit of this. In addition, scriptures in the Bible are not written in a vacuum. God may have inspired different um, scribes throughout the text, but it is his word being written. When trying to understand the context around a topic or person in scripture, you can't just read one or two scriptures. You must search for all relevant texts within the Bible to fully understand God's mind on the topic. Above all, scripture does not refute scripture, as Donovan said earlier. There are no contradictions or mistakes. God's voice and mind is the same from Old Testament to New Testament. He ain't two different gods. It's the same one. To understand it, you cannot break the word into pieces. You have to look at the full picture. So understand that when we're talking about context. Now let's talk about helpful hints. Helpful hints to study in the Bible. One, you cannot study with a definite stance on a topic. Again, that's you coming in as a child. I'm not taking a stance one way or the other. Lord, show me. What does your word have to say? Um, number two. Clear your mind of all biases and preconceived notions and pay attention to whatever God's word communicates. Be prepared to receive all the information God reveals. And the reason why it says be prepared to receive, because if I got a bias against something, I'm not going to be prepared to receive that. I'm going to refute it. I'm going to stand against it and bend it to what I want it to be. Third thing. Ask God to reveal what you are supposed to find within the scriptures. I'm reading. I see words. 
what should I be getting out of this, Lord? Because let's be honest, sometimes you're like, I don't know what I'm supposed to have got from that session. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> let's pray about that. Let's try to get more focus. Um, the fourth thing, your sole goal should be to understand the mind of God on the topic. Not to validate what you think. It's to see what is he saying. Because I need to adapt that. And then the fifth thing is, remember, scripture always explains other scriptures. There are no contradictions in the word of God. So if after I do my little research and recovery and get all my scriptures and I start reading and be like, he say one thing here. He say one thing here. He's contradicting. Okay, now we're going to do a study within a study. Because I got to understand how these scriptures are not actually contradicting, contradicting each other. And why am I getting a contradiction in my mind out of this? So sometimes when you start to study, there are problems that have to be resolved so that you can better understand what God is saying. So that now I know that there are no contradictions there's just something I, there's a piece that I need to connect or two pieces I'm missing that need to be connected. Now, when I go out and start to disciple people or teach, I'm not leading people astray. So, and I think that's the best thing I've ever learned is that scripture does not contradict each other. So whenever I've come up against that, I instantly knew, okay, I'm missing something. Lord show me. And I will literally say that. And then as I keep studying and going, it's just he start to lead me here, 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 here. I grab scriptures that I didn't even know needed to be grabbed. And it's like, oh, okay. But I had to ask him. If I didn't ask him, he's not going to come in and be like, I'm going to take your mind and show you this. Like, no, I have to invite him. So remember, we have to invoke God. He's a spirit. He can't just come in earth and start doing what he want to do to people. We have to invite him or he will be breaking his word. Questions, comments, thoughts on that. All right. So with our last, uh, we got about, yeah, 14. I'm always precise. I don't know. About I, I, 14 minutes. It's 16. It's 12, 16. Yes. 14. That's why I said 12, 14. Oh. Ah. See, this clock keeps getting off. All right. So principles. Let's talk about, we're going to start getting into, but we won't probably get far. Principles of correct biblical interpretation. Let's start off. So, number one. Let me do this. Because I know people are visual. Hold on, guys. Okay. Just make this easy on myself. Sorry, guys. I'm about to pull up the slides so you can see them. Now, I should have did that last. Uh-oh. Am I still on? Yeah. Up. Is everybody gone? Everybody else is there. Well, I mean, it's... Hello. Yeah, I'm still here. Oh, everybody. Uh, Sorry, it, my thing got messed up. I was like, oh, everybody gone. They don't like the lesson. <laughs> um, hold on, let me show you. mean, he's in like that. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's okay. All right, so here we go. Uh, principles of correct biblical interpretation. Number one, interpret everything in light of equally important. I got to fix that sentence. Interpret everything in light of equally important. Oh, no. Equally important, but seemingly contradictory scriptures. Let me re reread that. Sorry. Interpret everything in light of equally important but seemingly contradictory scriptures. I'm going to show you the example. I shouldn't even sh share my screen. Uh, I got uh, Gosh darn it. Um, I should have ended class. No, I'm just playing. Um, so we're going to look at Psalms chapter 5, verse 5, because this is going to be involved. Um, we're going to look at that in just a second. I'm going to have to stop sharing how you share. Um, let me just read this, and then this will make sense. So interpret everything in light of equally important but seemingly contradictory scriptures. Because remember I said, sometimes you're going to read scripture, and it's going to sound like this scripture is contradicting the other scripture, and then it's like you got an impasse. Where do I go? Um, 
So what I have here, I'm going to read this and then I'm going to stop sharing so he can share and we'll end here. Um, Psalms chapter 5 verse 5 says, and we're going to look at the actual scripture. God hates all workers of iniquity. But in Romans 5, 8, it says God loves us while we were yet sinners um, working in iniquity. So the question becomes, is this a contradiction that God loved those working in iniquity while hating all workers of iniquity? Like, which one is it? It can't be both. So these two scriptures do not contradict each other. Therefore, understanding from God is required to receive or reconcile the two passages. So let me stop sharing. And we're going to actually go to those scriptures. Okay. So in Psalms chapter 5, verse 5. The boastful shall not stand in your sight. You hate all workers of iniquity. So workers of iniquity, these are people in sin. They practice sin. They're not repentant of sin. So does God hate people? Does he hate workers of iniquity? And then let's go to Romans 5, verse 8. For God demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Okay, so this tells us that God demonstrated how much he loved people because while everybody was still sinners, not even thinking about him, he died. So for someone studying, if they come across these two scriptures, and they had, to them, this is going to be a clear contradiction. How do I reconcile this? Because this one scripture says that he hate workers of iniquity, but then this other scripture says he's saying people that were sinners operating iniquity, he loved them so much he died for them. How so, Sway? So, so, yeah. Okay. You gonna go back? What you just said, like, I don't know. how they contradict themselves? Okay. I'm really so, saying both of the scriptures. So I was just free fall. I was just free talking, but I'll try it. So what I was saying is, someone may read these two scriptures and be like, okay, in this one scripture which Trey went to, um, it says that he hates. Go back to the. I, I don't want to misquote it. Psalms five five. It's not the whole one, I don't think. I just want to see the whole one. Um, uh, the boastful shall not stand in your sight. You hate all workers of iniquity. So you hate all workers of iniquity. So this ain't leaving no room like, eh, some people he hates. Right. So, okay, so this person's going to read the scripture and be like, oh, he hate all workers of iniquity. Right. He hate people that, that just be out there doing their thing. And then if you go to Romans 5 and 8, it... But God commendeth his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So one scripture says he hates all that work iniquity, but then the other scripture says he loved everybody so much that while they were sinners, he died for them. So do you love them or do you hate them? I don't know. I'm confused. That's what someone would be like. Okay, gotcha. And so to them, these two scriptures could seem like they contradict each other. So then they're at an impasse of, I don't know, I think he hate people. And then you keep operating too long, this demon going to show up like an angel and be like, God is a hater. You shouldn't serve him. You should serve Lucifer. This actually happened to somebody. So I'm just saying, like, and to them, this, this demon that's disguised as an angel is going to go to scripture and start pulling out all these scriptures that seem like God is this person. He's not because of how it's worded. So we got to understand that. Okay. As me studying the Bible, if I come across these two scriptures and to me, it seems like a clear contradiction. I have to instantly know I'm missing something. These two scriptures don't contradict. There's more meaning between all these other scriptures in, in the Bible, and I got to seek God for help on reconciling why these scriptures really don't contradict, even though to me, it sounds like they do contradict each other. And that's the example I want to give. I know for a fact, and the reason I'm asking is because I, I, ran, I ran to a couple people, and they go live, and they the title of their live is, Why Do We Hate the Devil? And... I'm getting it like we like basically trying to say we shouldn't hate the devil. We should, you know, 
I'm not trying to say this is what they actually saying, but this is what they sound like. They're saying we would put our hate towards God because he gives the devil power of, like, you know, authority of telling us to do this. And I'm like, but you're not making sense. Right. Um, because you're not looking at the people, like, you're not looking at the people of their actions. You're looking towards what God, like, gave authority to. And I'm looking, I'm saying this because we have, I had, you know, uh, what we say? Uh, you read what you saw in the Bible, basically. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I had to put it in there. I forgot what I said. Uh, consequences and actions or something. I forgot what I said. But anyways, I was telling them that, but it, it's not making sense of what he's saying. Because, like, I'm like, are you for God or are you for the devil? And I'm... He didn't have to answer me because I could see all the necklaces. He was wearing them little unk necklaces, mm-hmm. necklaces and all that. I was like, what is this? Because I'm like, I feel like you're trying to teach people to hate God. Mm-hmm. And that's not making sense. And I'm like, people on the, people are literally on this live paying, paying them attention. I'm like, this this whole thing is just foolishness. And I'm like, you, you, you come on live not to explain, but hear what other people have to say. Like, explain their hate. And I feel like that feels is fire. And I'm like, this, this is just so toxic right here. Yeah. So that's the real reason I was really asking because it's I'm like maybe that's where people get it from. Like, they don't understand scripture and it may seem like God is doing something. Again, we gotta remember some language in the Bible is Hebrew idioms too. Mm-hmm. So it's not literally saying this about like there's a scripture that says he created evil or something. But that's that's not too. really what that means, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's all it's a lot of scriptures in the Bible that seem like God is just a horrible person, but he's not. So you got some scriptures that make it seem like he's a horrible person. Some scriptures that make it seem like he's the best thing since sliced bread. How do you reconcile that? <laughs> so, so, and that's the thing. If you don't know how to study and spend time with God so he can open up your understanding, you're going to be walking in life with this hatred towards God because you don't understand these scriptures. And then you're going to have some demon come further fuel that fire to solidify why you should hate him. Because they hate them. And it's just going to be toxic. So does that make sense? What I'm saying? Just how scripture could seem like. That's all I'm saying. Mm -hmm. How it seemed like it's contradicting. And that's when you know, okay, I got to spend more time in this and with God. Because I have to go into this knowing scripture never contradicts scripture. Mm -hmm. So there's something I'm missing. Not, aha, I knew it. No, like that post from three years ago. Aha, I was on to something. No, you wasn't. You was lost in and you lost now. So, all right, so I'm going to stop there. Any further questions, comments, thoughts, anything before we end for today? No, really that good. scripture doesn't contradict itself is the one bias that you should go into studying with. What would you say? One I said bias. knowing that scripture, scripture doesn't contradict itself is the one bias you should go into scripture <laughs> studying with. Well, I need to learn more about Hebrew idioms. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot to wrap your head around. I'm not going to lie. It took me a while to even kind of get to an okay spot in that. But, like, I know what it is, but it's still growing in where it's like second nature. Like, ah, I got it. Where I don't feel like I'm that solidified in it, but I I know I'm familiar with it and know I just need to get better with it. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, we have two more discipleship trainings this month before we go on our, I think we'll be breaking for three Sundays for DTS and then for Bible class, it'll be two Mondays. But um, we got two more classes this month. And then we'll pick back up. We'll still be on studying the Bible because we want to go through those examples and stuff. So, it, um, yeah, I guess that's it. Anything for our close out in prayer? Or any, no, I'm not going to close out. One of the students is going to close out in prayer. So you guys can choose who's going to pray. And it could be anybody on virtual too. All right, so I guess we got nothing in the room. So we're going to go ahead. <laughs> I voted you. <laughs> All right, well. Okay, so Rodacia closes out for her. Lord, we thank you for this lesson today. We pray that we are able to take the things we learn and apply it to our lives and begin to study and consistently know what your scripture has to say more. Um, we come against all attack of retaliation that may try to get us out of the way in studying. I just pray that everybody here makes it home safely and that the roads are all clear of any hurt or danger that might, may try to come to anybody in this room or even on 
virtual if they're traveling. And always thank you. Until next time. Jesus name, pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs>